everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be reviewing the new book from Kirby Roseanne's Mythic World. And let me tell you, all this book was well worth the wait. So let's get straight into it. Firstly, the cover has a raised glossy finish as per usual. And the cover art can be found inside the book for you to colour also. Size-wise, it is exactly the same as Kirby's other books at 25 by 25 centimetres square and it is one centimetre in thickness. Now, I have the UK version here and thank you so much to LOM Art, Kirby's UK publishers, for kindly sending me out a copy. This book was first released in the US in March and most recently released in the UK on April 14th. So most of you have probably seen a flip through by now. This will be a more detailed review with me discussing how I envision each page to be coloured, so get ready for a long video, my friends. If you are looking for a quick, quick flip through, there are quite a few up on YouTube already, so um, you can go and have a look at them, or you could just mute me and speed the video up. Um, before we start looking through the book, I have seen some comments regarding this book being a bit creepy for some people. I totally get that this subject matter is not going to be uh, to everybody's style. Uh, personally, I like supernatural and all things creepy and spooky. And I also have a love for mythology too. I think understanding the meaning behind each image within their relevant cultures just makes the pages that much more fascinating to me. Now, I've also seen a few comments saying this book has a lot more double page spreads than Kirby's previous books. So, of course, out of curiosity, I counted. <laughs> and Mythic World actually has 24 double pages. Uh, where Worlds Within Worlds has 26 double pages, as does Fragile World. So Mythic World actually has the least amount of double pages in the World series. Now, the binding, there has been a lot of discussion around this, and I've had quite a few direct messages also asking about it. I don't have the US copy, so I can't really comment on that. I have purchased a US copy many years ago of Mythomorphia, and I did have binding issues, so I went and bought a UK version to replace it. I have never had any binding issues with my UK versions. When you first get the book, so the binding can seem quite tight and some of the pictures are right in the center of the binding, but the spine breaks quite easily with a little bit of pressure. And I've colored one page in Mythic World so far. So my book actually already lays virtually flat when opened, which you will see very soon. Okay, whoops. So our first page in the book is the title page and we have a picture of Medusa who is one of the three powerful Gorgon sisters in Greek mythology. She was cursed by Athena which resulted in her serpentine locks and a face that turns anyone who looks at it to stone. This is our nameplate double page and it has small elements uh, from all the different creatures inside the book. Okay, our publishing info and blurb pages, which depict some of the landscapes you will see throughout the book. And the blurb says, a mythical and magical experience awaits. Venture with me into a parallel world where familiar landscapes come to life with gods and goddesses, monsters and spirits. This is legend as you've never seen it before. Each intricate illustration has been crafted with fine liner pens and can be coloured in any way you like. Find out more information about each myth at the back of the book. So at the back of the book, there is an index describing each myth depicted in the book, and you can find them quite easily from the page numbers um, that are marked at the bottom of each of the colouring pages. Now, I have printed out the index from the back, so I can give you some background on each picture. I'm just going to give you a summary, though, so I can read it, so you can read it in its entirety when you get the book, if you choose to do so. So uh, this is our first double page spread. Please bear with me with the pronunciations of some of these mythologies because I guarantee I'm going to butcher their names. So this is the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland and the causeway was built by the giant Finn McCool, Finn McCool in his attempt to defeat his Scottish rival Ben and Donna. Now the stone-like columns protrude up to 12 metres above sea level and they were created from Finn tearing out her and hurling chunks of the coastline across the sea. A misdirected throw from Finn is now the Isle of Man and a lost shoe can be seen in a huge boot-shaped rock. 
So I'll put a picture up here of the Giant's Causeway, which you can see has beautiful green grassy mountains in the background. And the rocks are basalt, so a grey brown with ochre undertones. Now basalt is usually formed from lava, so you could colour lava dripping down the mountains or have the clouds ashy and red. Now Finn is the giant throwing the rock, so I would colour him with green, orange and white, the colours from the Irish flag and maybe with some dark hair. The big guy with the club is a Scottish Ben and Donna. Uh, he would look awesome with a tartan pattern on his outfit with some gold um, accents. Actually, maybe you could use a tartan patterned washi tape to create the look and maybe give him some red hair. That's a thought. Okay, page eight. Some page numbers are down the bottom there. Um, this is the white stag from East Asia. He was being chased for days by hunters through the forest where he led them to a lake full of fish. The hunters then relocated their families to settle on the lakeshore where they lived the rest of their lives as fishermen. So if we colour him white, I think he'd look great with a bit of sparkle or glow to make him look um, almost luminescent or iridescent. I can see the background coloured in a couple of different ways. Um, first, you could do dark and, a dark and gloomy forest with it opening into this bright and colourful lake scenery. Or the entire picture bright and cheerful with some sun rays shining down and glistening off the stags first. A very magical page. <clears throat> page nine. Next, we have this grumpy looking King Kong guy. <laughs> he, he is uh, he's one of the wicked monkey spirits called Sarugami who reside in the Japanese Alps. This is also where Matsumoto Castle, one of Japan's most iconic buildings, is located. These guys were considered fallen gods and behave like wild monkeys, but are bigger, more intelligent and dress in human clothes. They are now considered a supernatural spirit known as yokai, who are the opponents of samurais and other heroes. And many myths involve them kidnapping young women from villages. Okay, so Matsumoto, Matsumoto Castle is also known as Castle Black or the Black Castle because of the colours of its exterior. Now pictures I've seen of the Serugami have him brown in colour with white um, around his face area and his armour in colours of black, gold, red and green. I try to make him the focal point with keeping the uh, background darker, more neutral colours so it fades away, even the water quite dark, like dark navy blues. Page 10, this guy looks like he's grown out of the cliffside. So this is Thor, the god of thunder, and he's in a valley and a mountain ridge in Iceland, which is believed to have been formed by Thor striking down his hammer into the rocky landscape. Thor is described as being red bearded. You can see the lightning swirling around him here. So I envision a turbulent stormy sky, dark with glowing flashes of lightning about, for his armour and his clothing, I'm thinking of the colours of black, uh, red and gold, courtesy of Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> now, it, it gets pretty cold here, so I'm thinking maybe some icy glaciers for the background. Um, otherwise, maybe uh, colour the cliffs all green. Page 11, this is the Minakawa, a huge dragon-like bird from the Philippines. It is said to patrol the sky, waiting on its chance to capture and swallow either the sun or the moon, creating a solar or a lunar eclipse. As Earth is plunged into darkness, the cries of the people startle the creature into releasing the celestial body. So he is described as having feathers like razor sharp swords, eyes like mirrors, and its beak and talons are made of solid steel. I mean, you would think swallowing the sun would burn his little throat. So <laughs> when there is a solar eclipse, the sky turns that orangey colour before turning black. I think he would look great in silvers and white to create the steel and sword effect and contrast it against an orange and black sky uh, with lots of shadows cast down onto the mountains. Okay, this guy looks a treat. He has a... Um, Dragon's tail, snake heads for fingers. Um, his head is on fire and he has bat wings. Now, he looks like he's coming straight out of the volcano here and he's about to destroy this poor little village. Um, 
All right, so he is Typhon, the winged fire-breathing storm giant from Greek mythology, who was imprisoned beneath Mount Etna in Sicily, Italy, by one of Zeus's thunderbolts. The volcanic eruptions are said to be caused by Typhon trying to escape. Now, we will see a few of his children later in the book, the Chimera and Scylla. So I think this page will call for lots of reds and blacks for all this lava. This is my favorite page in this book. I think this guy is actually super cute. Uh, he looks like he has one webbed foot though, and the other isn't. Now, he is a mischievous water demon from Japan called a kappa, and he lives in rivers, lakes, and ponds. Now, the little pond on top of his head is the source of its power. If that pond spills, it can lose its power or even die. They usually use their powers to create mischief, but they occasionally help humans too. The simple act of offering a cucumber with which they have a curious affinity is enough to ensure protection from them. That sounds a bit like my preteen, cute and mischievous with a penchant for cucumbers, and hummus. <laughs> um, so my research tells me they are typically either green in color or um, a yellowish blue with the turtle shell on its back. Um, I'd also color the water with a greenish tinge as the capra is said to be slimy in appearance. Uh, the tree would look good colored as a cherry blossom and in the sky you have either a sun or a moon over here and there's a lantern next to the tree. So there's a few options for light sources. Also fun fact, well Actually, not a fact because we are talking myths here, but apparently kappas are obsessed with politeness. So if you bow deeply to one, it will mimic the gest gesture and um, spill his little pond from his head and die. So this is most definitely the Kraken. His mouth looks like a giant cave. Now this legendary sea monster lives off the coast of Norway and Greenland. He sleeps at the bottom of the sea and rises to the surface when he's hungry. It creates uh, whirlpools to suck in ships and rip them apart. It is believed to be so big that when it emerges from the water, it is often mistaken for an island. Okay, so when I, when I first saw this page, I wanted to color the Kraken red. But I think a nice deep dark green would look good and make his face look like the side of a mountain with his mouth looking like a cave entrance. Uh, with the water coloured using maybe aquatones and a beautiful blue sky, either clear or you could add some fluffy white clouds. Now this is the Baba Yaga, which I've already coloured for you guys. The colour along should be up on the channel tomorrow, hopefully. I coloured it entirely with Prismacolors, and as always, they work so smoothly on Kirby's paper. The paper in the book is um, very white in colour and has a decent thickness to hold your water mediums too. So Baba Yaga is from northern Russia and lives in a hut that spins around on chicken legs in the birch forests. This is the river snake of Horseshoe Falls, Canada. Now his aim in life is to poison the water in Niagara Falls and then eat the people that have taken a drink from the river. Now I'm assuming the people poisoned are dead. His plans are foiled and he ends up being killed by a lightning bolt courtesy of Henem the Thunder God and his dead body obstructs the flow of the river and forms the Horseshoe Falls. Now, I can't find any descriptions of how he would have looked, so there's a few different ways you could go about this, in my personal opinion, of course. Um, obviously, there is a whole lot of water in this page. I'm thinking the water would look better on the greenish-brown side rather than the deep blues. Um, so you could contrast the snake against those dark colours with reds, oranges, um, yellows, or even maybe a deep purple. Um, you could use blacks and greys instead maybe and make him dark so he looks like he's the top of the concrete. Okay, next we have the Bunyip from Noosa in Queensland. The water monster is from our or Aboriginal folklore. It is said to live in inland waterholes protecting Australia's wildlife. You can see the reflection in Kirby's picture which comes from part of the Everglades which is named the River of Mirrors because of the intense reflections. Now it is commonly described as being a gentle shaggy furred herbivore. So despite his uh, facial expressions, he's one of the good guys apparently, he's also normally dark brown to black in colour 
Cryptozoologists have claimed that the bunyip actually existed at one time after the discovery of strange fossils and alleged sightings in the mid-1800s. Kirby's bunyip, of course, has a plant growing out of it because that is just how Kirby rolls. Uh, Noosa is very tropical, so I think clear blue water, brightly coloured florals and vivid greens would look good on this page. Okay, we have a large dragon on a mountain. Are these crystal balls in his claws? My instant reaction is to use purples and yellows for this page, but let's see if Kirby has given us a physical description. So this guy is the Druk, and he is from Bhutanese mythology and lives in the remote areas of Mount Everest. Its roar is attributed to the thunder that echoes through the mountains, the Druk is a national symbol and features on Bhutan's national flag and in the national anthem. So, okay, I'm definitely going to be able to find a picture of him. Um, Bhutan's leaders are known as the Druk Gal Gal Galapo, which means dragon kings. So the national flag is yellow and orange with a colourless dragon. So we can still use the yellows and purples on this page. If we colour him um, yellow with an orange underbelly or vice versa, um, that looks like a little bit of lightning coming out of his snout and hitting the village. And his roar is attributed, attributed to thunder. So we could use deep purples to create a thunderous night sky and um, some greys to create a rocky mountain top. Okay, next we have a giant bird picking up an elephant. Look how happy the elephant looks. But something tells me I don't think he knows what's coming. Now, who is this guy? He is the rock from Madagascar. He is a gargantuan bird from ancient Arabic mythology who has a particular appetite for fully grown elephants. Its feathers are likened to giant palm tree fronds and its wings, each spanning 15 metres, can create powerful cyclones. In one Arabic fairy tale, Sinbad the sailor ties himself to the rock's leg and the bird flies him to a rocky valley filled with diamonds and jewels. So it looks like lightning cracking in the sky again and around the rock. Um, but this picture gives me a daylight feel. So I'm thinking dirty blues and greys for the sky. Even those uh, bluish greens, like the colour of the sky before it hails. Then warm greys for the rocks. And then the jewels coloured like uh, clear crystals, like diamonds. And the rock I'd colour with browns and I think uh, French greys. Okay, this is a real mix-up. This is the uh, Chimera. We mentioned earlier the child of Typhon. This is a three-headed uh, fire-breathing creature with a lion's head and body, as well as a goat's head and udder, and a serpent or a dragon for a tail. This mean looking guy is said to be from Yenatus in Turkey, where small fires have been burning from vents in the side of the mountain for the more than 2,500 years. These fires are said to be from the Chimera's breath. Okay, so I'd color this guy in warm browns with maybe a Black mane on both the lion and goat faces with the fur blending from browns to uh, yellow greens as it transforms from the lion's body to the snake. Um, and a creamy white for the for the udder. Uh, reds for the flames and the sky. Um, and then keep the rocks and pillars uh, neutral in greys. All right, he looks quite majestic leaping out of the water here. Um, so he is a shape-shifting creature from the Faroe Islands called a Nix and most commonly takes the form of a beautiful horse. It lures its victims towards the water before dragging them beneath the surface. Oh, okay, well, that's me, Dad. I would have followed the pretty horse and tried to lure him home with me. <laughs> Apparently, though, if you call his name, he loses power and you can escape. Okay, sounds simple enough. So the Faroe Islands are very lush and green and the water is a beautiful, vivid blue. I also think the Nyx would look a beautiful coloured white. All right, next we have the Askafroa from Sweden. She is a dryad, a tree nymph or a tree spirit. She is described as the wife and soul of the ash tree and her existence is bound solely to the tree. 
She's most definitely not friendly. And if you so much as snap a branch off her tree, she will kill you. So this page could actually be quite colourful. Ash, ash tree foliage is a lush green and then changes to yellow and also purplish reds during autumn and winter. So dryads in folklore typically have chestnut red or even green hair with a similar skin tone to humans, but with a hint of forest, such as olive greens or chestnuts. All right, we have some lizard monsters about to invade this cliffside village. These are the thin folk from Scotland who emerge from sea to abduct humans. They are also said to be amphibious. The island they live on is surrounded by a magical fog that engulfs travellers and lost ships. So are they on their way to kidnap someone or are they coming back um, home to their foggy island in this picture? Their faces are really giving off kidnapper vibes, but I think I'd still like to cover their picture with lots of fog um, around the lighthouse. This guy here looks like he's tiptoeing out of the water so no one will hear him coming. Uh, when I think of Scotland, I always think of their lush green countryside and I think this picture needs a blue but foggy sky. From what I've found on the fin folk, the females often appear with ivory or white skin and in a mermaid form. I can't find a description for the men, so my thoughts are that we could either colour them white or we could make them really gross and slimy and colour them quite dark with black tones and add some mossy accents to their skin. Okay, already I'm picturing lots of reds and golds again for this page. My red pencils are going to need to be replaced very quickly. Um, there are a lot of lanterns flying around, so we could have a fiery backlit background too. A bit like the flying lanterns on the cheetah page from Worlds Within Worlds. So this pretty creature is the Quillen, which is a gentle unicorn-like creature from China that appears shortly before the birth or death of a respected ruler. It is described as having a multicolored back and a yellow belly. Okay, so this is a plan. A golden belly, as it looks a little like armor plates on its stomach, and multicolored scales of red, blue, orange, and maybe some green as well. So all of them colored individually. Okay, so we have three females here on page 32. There are quite a few people to colour in this book. I think more so than in Kirby's older books. Um, here we have a bunch of clocks, some skulls and lots of uh, flowers and foliage in the background. And all the females look like they're holding some sort of thread. Okay, so these three women are the Morai from Greek mythology, also known in English as the Fates. And they control the fate of all living things. So one woman spins the thread of life. That would be her, I'd say. Um, while the other measures the length of your life. And the last woman cuts the thread, which determines the moment of your death. There is a tapestry depiction of the three women in the Albert Museum from London, um, which shows the women in the middle dressed in, uh, the woman in the middle is dressed in white, the one on the left is in blue, and the one on the right is in red. So I think if we keep the skulls a neutral ivory tone and the clocks a pale gold, we could bring some of the blues and reds from the clothing up to the trees um, for the flowers. Okay, next we have the Kumho from Korea. She is a supernatural fox spirit who transforms into the form of a beautiful woman. With every additional hundred years they live, another tail sprouts. So I'm assuming she was born with a tail and she has nine. So she's over 800, but under 900 years old. She's looking pretty good for her age. Um, she passes all her time prowling graveyards to feast on human Hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the Bake Kajira, which literally means ghost whale, and it is the skeletal spirits of slaughtered whales. They live in the Sea of Japan and spread famine, fire, and plague on the coastal fishing villages. 
I guess this one speaks for itself. We have um, maybe some ivory colors for the bones, a, a deep blue here for the ocean, um, the sky, maybe a nice light blue or maybe even a sunset. The birds, I would color a similar tone to the bones. For the rest of the whale body and the little fish coming out of the tail here, I try and keep them in a similar color scheme so we aren't adding too much to the page. Perhaps we could use navy blues or even maybe some flesh type of colors. Okay, page 36. So this looks like a butterfly with a human body. We've got cheetah paws for hands and like bird's feet or chicken feet for legs. So uh, this is a skeletal warrior goddess from Aztec mythology called an It's Papalotl. She watches over women in childbirth. I mean, I'd rather she didn't. <laughs> she rules over a paradise world where victims of infant mortality are sent. Okay, so she's a little creepy. Um, she's also a type of silk moth with wings tipped with blades of obsidian. That'd be those things here. Um, obsidian is usually a deep black or a blackish green. Um, she has jaguar claws on her hands and eagle talons for her feet. So I'd color her skin uh, like human. Um, her outfit in oranges, reds and blues, like what we typically think of as asset colors. Um, and the same on her wings with black or blackish green tips. Okay, these guys look fairly harmless over here. They're the Pataperihi from the Wapua forest in New Zealand. They look similar to ordinary humans and like to sing and play bugle flutes. Sunlight is harmful to them, so they are active at night and on foggy days. In this picture, they are depicted next to one of the largest trees in the world, which is named after the Maori god um, for the forest. So lots of greens and browns in this picture and maybe a dark sky showing either nightfall or you could do um, a really foggy, misty day. Um, this guy looks like he is on fire and he's running into the water to cool himself off. Either that or he's dancing some sort of jig there in the ocean. Um, he's the Yaksha from Thailand. They are a shape-shifting nature spirit that hides in the earth and tree roots. They are considered the guardian of natural treasures. So this guy is commonly shown as having a green or blue skin tone with a uh, golden red outfit. We've got the water down the bottom here. Um, we've got fire coming out of his headdress and a temple behind him, which I'd also color with um, reds as well. We've got the trees behind him. I'd color the background with greens, I think, to give the appearance of a nice deep forest. All right, we've got lots of tiny little details in these barrels, lots of jewels, lots of gold. Um, this guy is the Kubera and he's apparently the king of the Yakshas and the god of wealth and prosperity. But um, whereas the Yaksha here is from Thailand, this guy lives in China. He is often depicted wearing pink, yellow and green and he has the Himalayan mountains behind him. All right, we're in Iceland with the Land Vatia, who are the protective spirits of Iceland and guard the four quarters. The uh, dragon in the east, the eagle in the north, the bull in the west, and the giant in the south. I think I colour this mostly in greens and blues, including the northern lights in the sky. And I might add some red in for the dragon and the giant's outfit for them to become a bit more of a focal point. Or um, you could just keep the page cohesive with only greens and blues. Next, we have the griffin who inhabits the Carpathian Mountains in Europe and is half eagle and half lion. They lay eggs that contain golden nuggets. A race of one-eyed people resided in the foothills and made frequent attempts to steal from the griffins. The griffin is often depicted with uh, white feathers around his face and neck with a golden brown body and some dark brown wings. Okay, this is Scylla and Charybdis. They are sea monsters that haunt the Strait of Messina in Italy, near where my husband is from. 
Um, they were once beautiful water nymphs before being transformed into sea monsters by a jealous rival. Scylla has a voice like yelping dogs and six long necks. So here are her long necks and her little dog heads here. Uh, Charybdis is actually a whirlpool that sits beneath a huge fig tree and she swallows and regurgitates the sea three times a day. I think I'll be colouring Scylla in red tones with a really foamy blue sea. Uh, these grumpy looking trolls here, they're actually quite cute, are a cluster of basalt formations in Iceland and are said to be the remains of family of trolls. According to legends, the trolls once rested on the black sand beach at night. Okay, so I think I colour these guys quite dark. Uh, the water dark also, and then maybe a pinkish sunset in the background. Next, we have the phoenix from Greek and Egyptian mythology. In this picture, we have the phoenix stopping at the Arabian spice groves to gather frankincense and cinnamon for its nests. So we often see the phoenix in fiery colours as it rises from the ashes, but here he is gathering items to make his nest prior to his rebirth. So I think I colour him using pale greys and white and the spice groves behind him in golden hues of uh, oranges, yellows, reds and also browns. So I think autumn and fiery sort of colours. So next we have the giant scorpion men from Mesopotamia in Iraq. They are said to guard the gates of Mount Mashu where the sun god lives. So I'd colour them in skin colour for the top half of their body, um, blending it into orangey red tones for their scorpion tails. Um, the door I'd colour in gold with the sunlight coming through, maybe um, gold paint or gold gel pens to make that door stand out and the door be the focal point of the page. Okay, we are in Greece with the Sphinx. She has the head of a human, the body of a lion and the wings of a vulture. I'd colour this whole page in rich golden tones with a reddish hue to them. Um, and maybe some black for the wings. Now, I love this page. This is the Mummy Wata, a water spirit and deity from West Africa. She is a protector of the water kingdom and a force of good fortune and fertility. And she is usually accompanied by a water snake. I'd colour her outfit in red, gold and green. And I would colour the snake to match as well. All right, this mean looking fella is the Sharuf that inhabits the magma pools in Chilean volcanoes. Its body is made from rock crystals and magma and it has the ability to summon powerful earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Now to prevent these seismic events, a sacrifice can be made and after it has finished eating the human, it sets fire to the disembodied head and hurls it down to the people below. Charming, isn't he? Um, so in typical lava fashion, I'd probably colour him with reds, oranges, yellows and blacks with a dark ashy sky. So really dark colours with some bright um, reds and oranges to make the page pop. Now, this one I recognise as our Rainbow Serpent. This is from Aboriginal mythology and is based in Arnhem Land in the NT. He is the protector of water and has power over life and death in the desert. As the serpent travels through underground water holes, a rainbow can be seen in the sky uh, with their curves mirroring each other. So Kirby has made this easy for us and the tail of the serpent is actually turning into the rainbow here. So the colours used for the serpent can be brought through straight through into the rainbow. Okay, this is Alchemost and Gamian, powerful spirits from Russian folklore. They are described as having the heads of beautiful women, the bodies of birds and hypnotic singing voices. Alkanos is the bird of dawn. Her voice brings joy to good souls and pain to evil ones. Gemian is a symbol for wisdom and knowledge and she delivers prophecies from the gods. So I've seen some beautiful images online of Alkanos with red hair, which I'm guessing symbolises dawn 
and her wings also blend in from yellow to orange to red to blue. Gamayen is depicted as having black hair and black wings so I colour these pages quite opposite day and night um, one without much colour at all in just different shades of blacks and greys and the other one um, using your yellow, orange, reds and blues. I don't know um, which one is which. Maybe this one might be. It looks like she's got a sun behind her as part of her head. So I'm, I'm going to go with this one as being um, Alchemost. Maybe. Maybe. Either one would work. Oh, no, I thought that was Moon for a second. Okay, the Angate lives in Santo Thomas in the Philippines and is said to have the upper body of a woman and the lower body and legs of a horse with a single horn on her head. She carries a bow for hunting and hoards precious gems and wears sparkling jewellery. So the jewellery on this page is so tiny, so many really tiny details. Um, I think this page could be as colourful as you want it to be though. I do get spring vibes from looking at this page. Maybe some metallic paint or gel pens for her sparkling jewellery and um, the gel pens can get into those tiny little details as well. So this is the eye of the Varengan, a magical raven from Persian mythology. It acts as a messenger for the god of the sun. It is described as being the fastest of all birds and its feathers are used as protective charms against harmful spells and curses. The mountain inside the eye is a stratovolcano, which is a volcano that's built up of uh, layers of ash and lava. So I'd colour the inside of the eye using reddish brown and amber tones. The raven's feathers, I'd colour them a traditional black, maybe a blue black. Um, but I think these little birds flying around, I might colour white like ghost ravens. The only reason for that is so that they'd stand out against the feathers instead of blending in, but... Um, they'd also look good blending in, maybe with some dark greys or a more traditional black instead of a blue black, so you can um, see the difference between the two. Okay, I like this one. Um, next we have the Prickalichi and the Strigoi from Bran Castle in Romania. Now, we couldn't have a book about mythology without having a vampire and a werewolf. This picture I see as um, really dark and moody, a dark stormy night perhaps. Um, we've got the moon up here, maybe a tint of purple for the sky. Now Bran Castle actually has white walls with a red tiled roof. Um, the trees are colour with sort of bluish greens. The Strugoi, this is giving me Vampire Academy flashback saying Strugoi. I'd colour him in similar light tones to the castle walls, I think, um, so he doesn't stand out too much. Or maybe we could colour him dark and have um, everything else in the picture dark and the castle standing out. Um, but if I'm going to colour him in light tones, I'd also colour the werewolf in pale greys to match the colour tones of the rest of the page. Um, maybe using some yellows and purples to create a glow on his fur from the moon as well. Okay, so these creatures are the four guardians of the world and sky. The azure dragon is a guardian of the east and represents wood and the season of spring. The bird is a guardian of the south and represents fire and summer. It looks a little bit like a phoenix here. Uh, the white tiger guards the west and he represents metal and autumn. The black tortoise is a guardian of the north and he represents water and winter. So the azure dragon I would colour in blues. The black tortoise I'd colour using blacks and the greenish blacks um, and have a dark green snake coiled over him. The white tiger I'd obviously colour white and the bird with reds and oranges like fire tones. Okay, this is Isis, the Egyptian goddess of maternity and healing. I'd much prefer her overlooking my childbirth than the moth from earlier in the book. Um, she is also the divine protector of the dead. She is commonly depicted with a headdress bearing the hier hieroglyphic sign of the throne. Um, so much like a few of the pages in this book, reds, blues and golds would be the way to go, I think, including gold feathers on her wings as well. 
Okay, so this creepy guy bathing in a pond of bones is the Nokken, a shape-shifting water spirit from Norwegian folklore. In his true form, he is described as a grotesque, moss-covered creature with yellow glowing eyes, razor-sharp teeth, and skin like a drowned corpse. My gosh, what a description. He's not looking so grotesque here, though. Uh, Kirby made him a little pretty, <laughs> except for the floating bones in the background, of course. That'll do it every time. So out of the water, he can take the form of an elegant gentleman playing enchanting music on his fiddle to lure women and children to their deaths. Okay, so I'm thinking we can colour him with a human skin tone, possibly on the warmer side with mossy green accents where you can see the um, veins in his arms here and also his fins. Um, I'm also thinking a warm brown for his hair or even maybe a blonde with aqua colours for the water. I'm thinking pink water lilies and orange goldfish. The bones, we'll just blend them in and um, make them white, blend them in with the foamy water. Okay, so this giant fish looks like he has a fire in his belly, as well as a thunderstorm, lightning included, and rocks. And he looks like a mane of hair on his back as well. Okay, so this is the rainbow fish from India, and it is the size of a whale with colourful scales. Okay, um, alright, so the green scales, which I thought was a mane of hair is grass to symbolize earth the blue scales are not rocks um, but ice to represent water and the yellow scales are made up of lightning to represent air and the red scales are made of flames to represent fire now this is the Groot slang from south africa it is a giant serpent with the trunk tusks and ears of an elephant they are believed to have been created by the gods themselves at the beginning of the world however the gods soon realized they had made a terrible mistake by making something so vicious strong and insatiably hungry what on earth were they thinking so they decided to split them into two separate creatures the elephant and the snake honestly though guys we could have done without the danger noodles um yeah. Anyway, apparently one escaped and is said to be living in a cave filled with diamonds and jewels. So I've seen this guy described in a couple of different ways, uh, green and also brown. My choice, I think, will be to colour the snake in greens and have him basking on some uh, deep red rocks. And I'd colour the jewels like little icy crystals. This guy looks a little crazy and I think he's wearing a um, skull necklace. They all have different little patterns on them and they look like they're laughing. Uh, he is a demonic troll-like creature called an Oni. They are born when wicked humans die. They are described as red, pink or blue grey in colour and they wear loincloths made of pelts of great beasts and they brandish huge iron cubs. Okay. He's got fish swimming around his head too. Um, now, this guy is a one-man army with all those heads and arms. So he is a Hecatonchires, one of three from Greek mythology. They are giants, each with 100 hands and 50 heads. They control the clouds with their hands and the wind with their heads. All right, so I've seen him depicted with green skin. And I've also seen him depicted with human skin tone and a green outfit. So, um, lots of greens on this page. Okay, this looks like, <coughs> excuse me, this looks like a giant human size mouse. Actually, the length of my grass in the paddocks right now, I wouldn't be surprised to find one of these guys hiding in there. Um, this little cutie is a nature spirit from the Irish folklore called a puka. It often takes the form of a black horse or adopts the ears or tail of a fox, rabbit or wolf. The puka is believed to be responsible for the rotting of blackberries on Sawin, the end of harvesting season, which is now called Halloween. She looks like she's hiding in a field of wheat with some rotten blackberries um, on the ground down here. They're very tiny as well. Um, 
I think I color the wheat in just your typical wheat colors. The puka is blending into the wheat, so I'd probably color her or him <laughs> with some warmer golden brown tones. So she stands out, but blend them into the wheat colors as well. All right, next we have Chang'e, the moon goddess, and her companion, the moon rabbit, who is the guardian of wild animals. And this is from Chinese mythology. So in my research, she is depicted in almost every color under the sun, or should I say under the moon? <laughs> my favorite though, and how I think I'm going to color this page is with, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still, I still have this COVID cough. <coughs> um, with purple ribbons, <coughs> excuse me, hang on. Sorry guys, so I think I would color her with some uh, purple ribbons and a pale orange dress and the flowers that are swirling around her here, I would color um, in pink. I'd color the moon in the background with some pale yellow tones as well, as I think it will fit the color scheme a bit better than if we add blue into the mix. Okay, we have Barong, the king of spirits, representing all things good, and Rangda, the demon queen, representing evil. They are from Balinese mythology. Barong's mask dance is a traditional performance portraying the eternal struggle between good and evil. Now, Barong is commonly portrayed as a lion in uh, thick fur and wearing jewellery embellished with mirror shards. Rangda is portrayed as a hideous fanged witch with wild hair and a lolling tongue. So we have Barong on the right with her thick lion's fur and her jewellery. Rangda is on the left. So I colour Rangda, I think, with wild white hair, a red face and red, black, white and gold for the outfit. I colour Barong with similar colours, but I think I'd use some light ochre tones for her fur instead. <coughs> Now we have the Gothic Grotesques from Notre Dame in uh, Paris. We have no functional purpose. Um, they simply serve as decorative sculptures. I really want to see this colored in a dark Gothic color scheme, really black, really moody. Uh, maybe it could be Notre Dame at night though, since it's actually quite um, a light exterior, I think. Um, actually, brilliant idea, Karen. I'm going to color this as a night scene and um, the windows here can create a light source and a glow, um, creating shadows and light on our gothic grotesques. This is Jorogumo, a yokai from Japanese mythology. Every time I see this picture, I think of the Stygian spiders in the throne of glass forks. Um, she usually takes the form of a spider, but has the ability to shapeshift into a beautiful woman. She preys upon young men, seducing them and binding them in her strong silk threads before she weakens them with venom, creating a slow and painful death. She seems like she'd be great fun at parties. Um, the Yorogumo spider is commonly depicted in black and yellow, so I think she'd look great in a black outfit um, with golden ribbons. And I colour the background using um, sort of mahogany colours, mahogany wood. This pretty little mermaid is the Iara from Brazil. She is a siren who sits on a rock and sings while brushing her green flower adorned hair and attracting the attention of male passers by before dragging them to the depths of the river. So this is the next page I'm going to be colouring. So this is going to be the next colour along after the Baba Yaga. And um, I'm going to colour her with some deep green hair and a red to aqua blend for her tail. And I'm gonna use different shades of red and blue to color the um, underwater foliage behind her. Okay, we have a giant turtle-like creature with a village on his back. And these um, serpent-like creatures attached to him with uh, duck-like features on their faces. This is this is the Bedouin from Bali, and according to the Balinese creation myth, um, only the world serpent Antiboga existed. Through meditation, Antiboga created Bedouin, a giant turtle. Two dragons lie on either side of its shell, that's what they are, um, to provide stability for the earth that rests on her back. When it moves, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur, 
above the earth there are several layers of sky okay first being water then a moving sky occupied by the god of love next a dark blue sky that holds the sun and moon then a scented sky full of flowers where snakes known as awan fall like shooting stars that sounds terrible um, the ancestors live in a fiery sky further above and the gods occupy the final sky. So Kirby has clearly uh, depicted the scented sky with all the flying snakes here. Um, this whole page I can see coloured in beautiful bright colours, lots of greens, lots of reds, lots of blues. <coughs> oh, excuse me, we're getting to the end. I think I need a glass of water. Okay. This is the Yali from India, often portrayed as part lion, part elephant and part horse. Sculptures of Yali are common across southern India and are believed to protect the entrances of temples. If you look up the pictures of Minashaki Temple, the Yali is a dominating feature of one of the temple's many halls. The picture shows a temple in colours of mint green, aqua, red, yellow and even a light pink. Okay, this guy is the Wawel Dragon of Poland. I think he'd look good in basically any colour. I am quite partial to a green or a red dragon though. Um, but the rest of the page can have quite a neutral colour palette with the trees and the buildings. Keep them in this sort of greys, browns, greens, etc. Um, you've got the flames from his fire breathing, so go wild with his scales. Colour them any colour you choose. Maybe try to keep them all in the same colour family though. So by that I mean... Um, keeping all the colours on the page in cool tones, warm tones, or in neutrals. And on our final page, we have Atlas from Greek mythology. Atlas is one of the Titans, and he was condemned to carry the earth and heavens on his shoulders for all eternity. This is also the cover image from the front of the book. Now, we could use some really pretty warm colours in here with some blues and greens for the earth and also the dragon, um, some warm browns for the ground and some warm greys for the pillars. On the back cover, we have the moon goddess picture from inside the book. It is raised and glossy like the front cover image. Um, the top of the book says... Enter the extraordinary imagination of Kirby Roseanne's, where mythologies are brought to life in the world around us. Uncover rich cultural histories and the creatures and legends that permeate landscapes across the world. So that, guys, is my review of Kirby Roseanne's Mythic World. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I do have a copy of Mythic World to give away, so if you are interested in entering the giveaway, make sure you are subscribed to my channel, like this video and leave a comment down below letting me know which page in the book is your favourite, or if you maybe have a favourite myth or folklore that wasn't included in the book, let me know what that is down below. I'll be picking the winner at random using a random number generator. Um, let's make the end date a week from today, which for me will be Wednesday the 4th of May. Now, if you do take inspiration from any of the colour choices I mentioned, please tag me in your pictures so I can see how they turned out. Otherwise, feel free to wait for the colour alongs and complete the page with me. Now, speaking of the colour alongs, there will be a colour along coming for every page in this book. Yes, I am doing it again. Another full Kirby book colour along and I look forward to having all of you along for the journey. Uh, for those of you who have made it all the way to the end of this crazy long video, thank you so much for watching. I need to go get a glass of water and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.